Hiya. So we're going to go over the second example uh, from this uh, little section. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at distribution in a slightly different way for this example. So first, we're going to set up the premise, right? We need to set up what's kind of happening. So example 6.5, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a six-sided die and I'm going to roll it twice. So remember when we're doing something like this. Oh, and then I'm going to ask, um, what is the distribution of the values? So this is what I'm asking. What is the distribution of the sum of the values? So first, let's put down the groundwork, right? So what's our sample space? So our sample space, remember, is going to be ordered pairs i and j, right? And so since we have six options for the first one and six options for the second one, so six for i, six for j, six times six, that gives us 36. So we end up with 36 possible outcomes because this is ordered, right? We have two die. Um, so in order to get the distribution of the sum of the values, um, we need to basically calculate the probability that we get any particular sum. So let's do this through an example by looking at the sum for two. So in order to get a two, we know there's only one option, right? We need to get a one and a one. That's it. There's a, that's our only option. Uh, so this, remember, is represented by 1, 1. And so since this is the only option, what this gives us is we end up having that the probability of 2 is equal to 1 over 36, right? This is just the basic definition of probability. Here we have the size of A over the size of omega. Okay, well, let's look at the probability of 7 and see what we get for that. So 7, on the other hand, Right, we have multiple different ways of adding to seven, right? I have one plus six gives me seven. I have six plus one gives me seven. These are two different things because they're ordered. Um, and then I have these ones as well, right? So I end up having um, six different options. Um, and so therefore, the probability that seven shows up is six over 36. Uh, and so I can do this with every single number, right? So P of two, we said is one over 36. Uh, and then if you want, you can verify that the P of any given number is given here. This I forgot to make into equal signs, equal and equal. Um, so, yeah. Oops, my pen. Um, so we have this probability. And actually, this is what, when we talk about a distribution, this is the distribution, right? This is the distribution. Because I'm telling you exactly, if I give you a value, a number, or a subset, then you know automatically what the probability is. I'm telling you all the possible probabilities. Um, and that is what a distribution is. So when I ask for a distribution, I'm telling you, um, I am asking you to give me the function. Tell me exactly what the value of every subset is. Um, another way to do this is you don't have to list them one by one. You can also do them by a function. So I could say that P of I is equal to, and I'll have two different things. I'll either have I minus one over 36, right? Um, and this works for two, three, four, five, six, seven. So where I is in two until seven. Um, and then on the other hand, I should get 12 minus i plus one, right? Does this work? Uh, for seven, I should get 12 minus seven is five plus one is six, yeah, over 36. Or i in eight until 12. So both of these are perfectly okay ways of giving me the distribution but you need to define what the function is. And that's the important part, defining what the function is. Um, so another way to look at this function, because we, like I said, humans are visual people, we can look at this through what's called a histogram. Uh, so I didn't, I have, I will, we will talk about histograms, um, but I'll never really define it. Uh, so why can't I type histogram? Um, and basically what this does is it allows us to plot, in essence, the distribution. Uh, and so basically what I have here is instead of looking at this denominator, because the denominator, um, we can just make them all the same, 
once they're all the same, I can just see how many times I can get that, right? So two, I'll have exactly one time. And so I put it at a bar of one. Seven, well, this can appear up to six times, right? There's six different ways of doing it. So I made it be six, um, etc. So 10, it looks like there's three different ways. Um, and so this histogram basically allows us to quickly see um, what the distribution is. And this is where the term distribution is coming from. We're trying to see how the different things are distributed over all um, outcomes. And here, when we look at all outcomes, these are all the outcomes, I can literally see how it's distributed. It looks like a big triangle. So distribution equals triangle. Triangle. P.S. Don't ever, don't ever write this. You will lose points. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it basically looks like a triangle. So that's where this kind of comes from. Um, okay. Uh, I know this is a shorter video and it's a shorter little topic, um, but we're going to save the rest um, of the topics uh, or the rest of the, the different types of distributions uh, for the following uh, video. So I will see you then.